Now the next thing that I want to add into this game is some kind of player controls. So I'm going to get rid of this other instance for now. I'm just going to keep this first player and I'm going to add in some more interaction. So let's delete that one there and let's delete this draw method for this guy. So like I said before, interaction within the game comes in the form of these events. So it kind of goes then that I can just look for additional events here for any time I press anything on the keyboard. So I'm going to add in a section here to say keyboard presses. And for that, we just look for a different type of event. So I say again, if event.type equals, and this time it's pygame.keydown. So keydown has got to be in all caps, and this basically means that I have pressed any key on the keyboard. So the ones that I want to look for, I'm going to be moving the player with WASD. So A is going to move him left, and D is going to move him right. So I want to look for those two keys to start with. I say if event.key equals pygame.k underscore a so here the k has to be capital but then the a doesn't so if that's happened then i'm going to define a variable or i'm going to set a variable to true and before i do that actually i want to make sure that i define them to start with so above my classes i'm going to come up here and i'll have a little section which i'll add with a comment to say define player action variables so for now, this is only going to have two variables, which are moving underscore left, and I'll set that to false because to start with, he's not moving in either direction. So moving underscore right is also equal to false. Uh, this will grow over time, but for now, this will do. Uh, and now when I've got my event handler, I can now start changing those two variables. So when I press the A button, that means that I want the player to move left. So moving left becomes true. And uh, now I can just copy this down for the other button, which is D. We put down here, uh, and now he's moving right. So I say moving right equals true. So that's fine, but how do I know when the player has, when you've let go of the A button? So for example, if I press the A key, that's going to set moving left to true, but then I've got nothing to say that I've released the A key and moving left is no longer true. So I just need to look for additional uh, events here. And this additional event is going to be when I release the keyboard or release a keyboard button. So I had a comment here saying keyboard button released. And because the code is so similar, I'm just gonna copy this down and just change it a little bit. So I just make sure the indentation is correct. But now all I do here is say, instead of key down, I just change that to key up. The rest of it stays pretty much the same. But now I'm saying that although the event key is still the key A, now I'm looking for when it's being released so that when that key is not longer pressed down, so in that case, moving left becomes false. And when I release D, moving right becomes false. So these two sections are going to allow me to control whether a player is moving left or right. And now that I've got these variables, I can process them within the code to actually control the player's movement. One more thing that I'd like to add in here, though, now that I've added keyboard presses, if you remember, when I run the code, the only way to exit it is just by clicking the X button here. But it would also be nice if I could press the escape key on my keyboard and exit that way. So now that I've got this section for looking for key presses anyway, I can just say if event.key uh, is pygame.k underscore escape, all caps, then remember to exit, I just set run to false. So I can just do the exact same thing here, run equals false. If I run this code again, now I'm not going to click here. Instead, I'm just going to press escape and the game closes down. So it's just a nice little feature to have in here. So this is fine. Uh, I've got this way of looking for key presses, but nothing's actually happening. If I press A or D, all I know that's happening is that this variable is being set to true or false, uh, and same for moving left and right. I need to now be able to add in a way of reading this or looking for this information and then actually processing it. So to do that, if you remember within the class, I can add in these additional methods and that's what gives me this extra functionality. So I can just add a new method for moving the player around. But before I do that, I wanted to find a new uh, variable here. So at the moment, all I've got is the X and Y position and the scale. I want to also be able to give the players or even the enemies, essentially any of the soldiers, a speed. And the speed is going to determine how quickly they move around the map. So just after scale, we add a new uh, argument here, and that's going to be speed. So because I want speed to be an instance variable, meaning that I want all the players or all the soldiers to have this assigned to them, I need to make sure that I I do this line of code here. So I need to assign it as a self. So before I load in my image or anything like that, I'm just going to have a section here which will grow uh, of all the variables assignments. 
So I'll say self.speed equals speed. This might seem a little bit silly at first, but essentially all it's saying is you take that argument, which is just an argument on its own, just a variable, but then you assign it to the instance itself. So with that done, I now have a speed. So every time I create one of these, I need to make sure that I give it a speed variable. So in here, just after that, I'll say five. And this five basically just means that that's how many pixels the player or the enemy is going to move within each iteration. So with that done, I can start creating the move method. So I'm going to do it above the draw method because uh, I kind of like the structure this way. Draw is the last thing that I want to happen. I want to update the player's position first. So I'll create a little area here and I'll say def draw. So as always, it takes self as the first argument. But in this case, I need to feed in a couple more. And these are just moving left and moving right. So these are going to be Boolean arguments or sorry, Boolean variables that are determined when I press the keys. So moving left, moving right, and now I can process them. So I'll add a little section here with a comment to say, assign movement variables if moving left or right. Uh, and now I can just say, if moving left, meaning if moving left is true, so that's the argument that's being fed in here, if that condition is met, then I need to move the player to the left. Likewise, if moving right is true, then I need to do something else. But before I do any of that, to actually be able to move the player around, if you remember, I said that it's not the image that's important, it's the rectangle. So actually what I'm going to be moving is the rectangle itself. I'm going to be changing the rectangle's position by a certain amount, and in this case, it's the speed. But rather than directly moving the player around by that speed, I'm going to give it a new variable. So up here, I'm going to define another little area, which I'll say with a comment, reset movement variables. And my movement variables are just going to be dx, which is zero, and dy, which is zero. So dx and dy, it just stands for delta x and delta y, which means the change in the x and the change in the y. Now you may wonder why I'm adding this extra level uh, or layer of variables, why I'm not simply just moving the rectangle by the speed variable, and why I'm bothering with dx and dy. Uh, at the moment, it maybe doesn't make sense, but it will become apparent when I come to doing collision. So I want to know where the player is going to be when they try to move. So I don't want to know where they are right now or whether they are after they've moved. I want to be able to predict their position based on these delta x and delta y variables. So for now, I need to make sure that I reset them to zero at the beginning of every iteration. Uh, now I can say if moving left is, is true, then my delta x, which is the change in the x-coordinate of the player, is just a speed, but in a negative direction, because the x-coordinate goes from 0 all the way to the right-hand side. So if you're moving to the left, then your x-coordinate is decreasing. So I decrease by self.speed. Now I did the exact same thing for moving right, but now it increases by a positive speed. So now that I have my delta defined for my delta x, I can actually move the player rectangle around. So I'll add another little comment here to say update rectangle position. Uh, and now I just say self.rect.x increases by dx and self.rect.y increases by dy. Now I haven't actually done anything for dy yet, so that's not going to change, but I have defined dy variable, which is zero. So this is just saying that the y coordinate is not changing at all the x-coordinate will be changing depending on moving left and right. So that on its own is all I need for this draw method. Actually, uh, I meant to call this move, not draw. I already have a draw method. So we change that to move, and I keep this draw method below. So this move method uh, contains everything that I need to be able to move the player around. I just need to make sure that I actually call this method. Until you call it within your main game loop, it's not going to be run. So I come down here, I've got player.draw, I just need to add player.move. And I'll do that above. Actually, no, I'll call it underneath that. So I'll have my player being drawn, and I'll say player.move. Uh, but I remember there were two arguments that this move method took, which are moving left and moving right. And those are defined based on the key presses here. So I need to make sure that I put them in in the exact same order. So if I scroll back up, the first one is moving left, the second one is moving right. So I need to make sure that I do that in the same way. So here I put moving left and then moving right. 
Uh, if I run this code now and try and press the keys, you can see straight away the player is moving. It's a complete mess, but the player is moving around. So I'll explain what's happening here. There's essentially two things that I still need to add. The first one is that he's moving way too fast. Uh, and that's because I haven't set any kind of frame limit on this. So essentially this is just running as fast as the computer can run it. And because there's not really anything going on in this code just yet other than this player, well, it's able to process it very, very quickly. So I need to put a frame rate lock onto this. And that's quite easy to do. I'll just come back up to the top of the code and I'll add in a clock. This clock is going to be able to act as my timer and that's what's going to limit how quickly the game runs. So just underneath where I've created my game window, I'm going to add a comment to say set frame rate. And I'll create a clock. So clock will be pygame.time.clock. And then I need to rate, uh, set a frame rate. So my frame rate is going to be 60 frames per second. Now with that done, I can go into my main game loop and right at the beginning, I'll just add clock, which I've just created, dot tick. And the rate that I wanted to tick at is FPS. So if I run this code again, the movement is much more normal. So this is all running at 60 frames per second. So you can see the movement is actually controllable. I can move left and right and it doesn't just shoot off the edge of the screen. However, you can see that it's just leaving a trail behind it. And the reason for that is that I'm not updating anything on the background. So the only thing that's happening is basically it's not clearing what's already drawn. So it's just drawing all of these existing soldiers. And anytime I move the soldier again, it doesn't clean up anything behind it. So it just leaves a trail of the soldier behind. So if I was to be able to move up and down as well, I would just leave this uh, soldier trails everywhere. Uh, so to do that, I just need to make sure that I'm refreshing the background at every iteration. So for that, I'm just going to come up here before I've got my class uh, and I'm just going to create a new method or sorry, a new function here. And this function is going to be called draw underscore BG. So I say def draw underscore BG. This doesn't take any arguments. And all I wanted to do is fill the background with a particular color. So I say my screen, which is my game window, dot fill, and then in here I give it the color. So I'll just say BG in capitals, which is going to be my background color, but of course I need to actually define that background color first. So I'll come up here and I'll just say uh, define colors. So for BG, I'll just say BG equals, and these are RGB values. So I'm going to say 144, 201, and 120. This is just what I used in my game previously. You can mess around with this and change it to whatever you like. So now that this is done, I need to make sure that I'm actually calling this function. So if I run this as it is, remember, although these are created, this is not my game loop. So until I call it, nothing happens. So the problem is still there. I need to call this draw BG function here. And that's the first thing that I want to happen because I want to clear the entire screen and then I want to draw everything back onto it. So just underneath my clock.tick, I say draw underscore BG. So I call that function. And now you see the background's gone a little bit green. The player can move around and it doesn't leave a trail because it's just every iteration, it's updating the background, it's filling it again with this green color and that overwrites anything that leaves a trail. So this is starting to come together now. I've got a little bit of player control here. Uh, the one thing that I like to add though is that when he's moving right, it's fine, but when he moves left, he's just walking backwards. He doesn't actually like flip round to face in that correct direction. Uh, and that's really straightforward to add. So that's something that I'm gonna do just now. If I come back up to my player class, it just means that I need to add a couple more variables for this class. So underneath self.speed, I'm gonna say self.direction, uh, and I'll set this to one to start with. So in this case, one and negative one are gonna determine whether I'm, he's looking to the right or to the left. So one means he's looking to the right and that's kind of the initial state anyway. Uh, so it's gonna be self to direction, but I also need self dot flip. So I start this off as false. So I'll explain what self dot flip does in a second. But first of all, I need to change these variables when I'm actually moving left or right. So if I'm moving left, my DX line stays the same. I still want that to happen. But now I want to flip the player. So I say self.flip becomes true. And of course his direction now changes as well because he's moving left. So I say self.direction equals negative one. Now I just copy this down because I want the exact opposite of this when he's moving to the right. So the flip changes back to false and direction changes back to one. So running this code won't actually do anything because I haven't told the game or I haven't told the code to do anything with this direction and this flip uh, information. 
But really, this is quite straightforward. If I come to my draw method, this is where I'm drawing the player onto the screen. So I, this all stays the same. I say screen.blit, but now I don't want to just draw the image itself. I want to be able to flip the image at this point. So remember previously when I loaded it, I used pygame.transform to scale the image up. So now I can again use pygame.transform, but now I use flip. So this just flips the image either in the X or the Y axis. So first of all, the image that I want to flip is my self.image. And then the arguments are whether I want to flip in the X axis or whether I want to flip in the Y axis. So I don't want the player to go upside down. So the Y axis is going to be false, but I do want them to flip left and right on the X axis. And that's going to be determined by this self.flip variable. So when self.flip is true, I'm going to flip the player around to face the left hand side. When it's false, he's going to just stay not flipped to the right hand side. So that's the first argument. The second one was the Y coordinate, uh, the Y axis, sorry. I don't want them to flip upside down in that case. So I say false, wrap that round in brackets. So that's the section covered. Uh, and that determines my image. And then of course, the position is still driven by this self.rect at the end. So if I run this code, oops, run this code again, I can move to the right and now I move to the left and he flips around. So every time I change direction, the player also changes direction. Now, one small problem here is that this class, although I've made it as a blueprint for all of the soldiers, at the moment, the only thing that I can create out of it is my player because that's all the images that I load. So how do I make it create a player or an enemy? I don't want to have to create another class for it. Well, essentially all that's happening here is the only difference is just the image that it loads, right? So if I was to able to somehow control uh, where the image is are stored and which image I access, then I can change whether I want a player or an enemy. Well, that's exactly what I've done. So my image is here uh, in the player uh, directory are duplicated also in an enemy directory. They're just in a different color. So instead of typing player here, if I was to able to add another argument here to determine whether it's a player or an enemy, then I can load the relevant image. And that's what I'm going to do. That's quite straightforward. Before I have my X and Y coordinates, I'm going to add in a character type. So I'll add a new argument called car underscore type. Uh, and I just want to make that uh, an instance variable. So underneath my, uh, actually, I'm going to make that the first one. So I'll say self dot character type equals character type. So with that done, I can now feed in either player or enemy within the character type. And then I can use that to load the relevant image. So here I can use Python's uh, string formatting method. So you notice here I've got my uh, my quotation marks beginning and ending. So this is telling me the, the image path. Now before I even start that, I just put an F here. And what this basically means is that if I put anything in here within a curly bracket, it's going to add that as a variable into the string. So instead of player, I can delete that, add in my set of curly brackets, and inside there type self dot character type. So now I can either put in here player or enemy, and it's going to access the relevant folders within my, uh, my images. So I need to remember now, because I've added this extra argument, when I create an instance, I need to feed that in here as well. So before my X and Y, I put in player. So if I run this code again, I get the exact same thing, but now I know that it's accessing the correct uh, files. Now I have the, the exact same folders, like I said, within the image folder, I've got another set of, uh, of animations for enemies. So now I can just come down here and say, copy this down, but change it to enemy. Uh, enemy soldier. Now just to demonstrate, I'm going to leave this as player for now. I'm going to put this over to 400. Uh, and remember, this creates an instance, but it's not going to show anything until I call it. So I say enemy.draw. Uh, I don't want them to be able to move around because it's only the player that I want to control. So I'm not going to call the enemy.move method. I run this code. Now I've got two players. I can move the left one, but this one is coming up as another player. It's coming up green. But if I change this to enemy and run this again, you know, it comes up as a red one. So just like that, by being able to use this class as a kind of blueprint, I'm able to create different instances and different variations of the same thing. So this is really starting to come together now. I've already got my 
uh, my little game window and I've got my player that I can control and I've got an enemy created as well. So I want to add in some animations as well as collision because at the moment the player can just go off the screen uh, as well as jumping. So I'm going to do all that in a separate video. So for now, if you found this video useful, then please do leave a like. And if you'd like to stay up to date with these, then feel free to subscribe. Thanks for watching.